David, welcome once again to the studios of Highland. It's a big weekend next weekend in the Northwest with the race. First of all, will uh, could you just maybe remind our listeners about the history of the race and and what the event actually entails? Because it, it certainly is a, a tall order for for a lot of people. Yeah, no, thanks for having us in. Um, so the race, yeah, this is our this is our third year now, just coming up. So it's uh, a two hundred and fifty kilometer endurance race, uh, consisting of around a marathon and a half of running. 180 odd kilometers of cycling and 15 kilometers of, of kayaking so it's meant to be so it was to test people physically and mentally to to their to their limits and we have an amazing course out here for all, all around northwest Donegal so so that that's what it is an attritional race that people set out a lot of them not knowing if they're going to get to the end of it and um, they have 24 hours to, to, to battle around all the roads yeah. to, to get around. It's a mammoth task and I'm sure there's only a, a certain category of, of athlete that can take, take on such a challenge at this side. Um, well, there, there, if there is or isn't, I suppose there's some people, for an awful lot of people, just trying to get around in 24 hours is what you're trying, trying to do. And if you want to do that and you put in the, the, the effort, I mean, there's an awful lot of training involved, a huge amount of time. But if you do that, you don't have to be a phenomenal athlete or have a background in it. There's, there's people that have signed up and got round that have never done anything like this before. But then again, there's people um, that would get round in 15 hours that would be going incredibly fast the whole way around. The, the, the people that set out to try and win it who are serious, serious athletes. So there's, there's a big difference and there's a variety there of the, the people that are attracted to it. And this event has grown, uh, particularly on the numbers front. They're increasing every year and just as popular in, in the third year of the event. Big numbers again, David? Yeah, well, I suppose it, like in terms of numbers and the type of people, it's not like a mass, mass participation event. So it's not, not like um, huge, huge numbers. But on the first year, we signed up 80 competitors. And we signed up really, really early. So we had around 55 on the day. Last year, 100. We had 66 in the day. And this year, we signed up 150 back in April, May, and we're hoping to have around 90 on the day. So yeah, 50% increase in last year, but uh, still it's still manageable. You still know from our, our uh, point of view as organizers, we still know most of the competitors. Um, so it still is that, it does feel like a smaller event yet uh, in terms of numbers, but uh, yeah, it has grown quite a bit. You mentioned that it's manageable from your point of view, but how does an athlete manage such such a, a big task and, and setting out their stall and their plan for the course of whatever it is, the 15 to the 24 hours that it takes? Yeah, well, I suppose there's, there's your plan, two different plans. So it's how to get to the start line, first of all. And uh, as I said, 150 people signed up, 90 at the start line. A lot of people get injured in the lead up and training programs are vastly different. People have to work around. N n the vast majority of people aren't professional athletes or working around this around their jobs, do you know, but they're still putting in really, really big long hours, um, long runs. So I know people going out doing 10, 10 hour plus training runs at the minute. They'll, they'll probably finish that now this this week, but the last weeks. Um, so th there's all that training to mix around to, to work to, to plan your um, your sessions around. But then when you actually get to race weekend, there's your plan of how you're going to get through the day. So. What do you know? Do you start off slow on the first stage? Um, when do you want to kick in your nutrition for the day, your clothing for, for the day? Everything has to be planned. So there's a huge amount of detail goes into every competitor and how they plan their day out. Why did you pick Donegal originally to host the race, and and why is can continue to base it here? I suppose my my own background would have been I've done a lot of long distance endurance events um, in different places around the world and I've I've been interested I've done the race across the Sahara Desert and one of the, one of the reasons it's popular for people is because the environment is very extreme the heat there you also get races North Pole South Pole at altitude so people want these extreme environments and I always thought on any trips I've been on or any race I've done that the wind is what bothers me more than anything else way more than than the heat or the cold and Donegal we have that in spades and you know we have it, it's usually a prevailing westerly wind that that's really really gusty and can be very very hard the terrain also it is undulating it's an incredibly tough course from that point of view um, and you never know what the weather is going to get so th that was the reason to pick Donegal it's a be beautiful location but it's also an incredibly tough course and I think that's played out in the last two years where it has been a course to rival some of the toughest races around anywhere really in the world. Well, we had a tough man who won it last year, and and Sean McFadden. He was the first man to to cross the line back at Garton. What's the local interest been like for two thousand and sixteen in it, David? Great local interest. Yeah, I mean it's grow. That's that's something that's growing uh, big time year on year. So uh, at the minute, I think we stand with seventeen competitors based in Donegal taking part in the event this year, which is which is brilliant. And not just the competitors then, but the supporters and people that get it 
to get out to, to, to show support to all our competitors is it has increased year on year. So no, it's great both to have the, the local competitors taking part and also just the locals coming out to, to support the event. And locals helping out as well, volunteering, because you need a, a big support team around you to, to stage such an event off, off this side and you're always welcome to more help coming on board David? Uh, yeah no I mean that's a massive part of it we'll have a hundred plus volunteers in the day so we, we run uh, the event in conjunction with uh, Garden Adventure Centre um, so, so we, we essentially run the event together and then we have you know between the Red Cross, the Civil Defence um, the local community groups in Rathmullen and Melton Dukery all around the place um, and, a, and a couple of local businesses, LK Bikes and Michael Murphy Sports have all come on board this year so it's been re really great to get that help but as I said 100 and odd plus volunteers we still need a few more so if anyone yeah fancies, fancies a session please please get in touch look up the race.ie and get in touch with us it'd be great. Yeah and it's worth remember as well this is all for, for charity. It is, yeah. So, um, so this year is actually our first year. We've got a headline sponsor this year. Is one thing. So, uh, Magnet Networks are a headline sponsor this year, and they, they, So it's brilliant to have that. And also, this whole this whole event is a not for profit event for Gerda Self Help Africa as the charity. So every competitor takes part. All everything goes towards towards the charity. So it's a, it's a, you know a great cause that it's all for. How much do the competitors and athletes get out of the support of the people on on the road when they're at difficult stages? Uh, and their journey and trying to get to the finish and, and, and back to Garten. How much does that help an athlete and, and spur them on, David? I think you can, it's very hard to define that, especially if you get the right per person supporting you at the right time. You can have some very, very low times in, in the course of an event. You, you don't know how you're gonna feel, especially it gets dark, you're 11, 12 hours in, it's raining. And just that encouragement from someone can make the difference between someone going uh, and you know we're stopping. And that's happened qu quite a lot of times. People have said to us, especially people traveling to the event, um, do you know, I, I remember the, the female winner last year was from, from Waterford and she said she just couldn't get over the fact that every one that she went past seemed to know her name, she had no people up here with her, but everyone knew her name, was calling her on, was cheering her on throughout the day. I think that's very typical, people that come, there's a lot of people from, there's about 10 nationalities represented and they all get really, really well supported and that's a big thing for them in, in, in coming to the event, they love the fact that it is so well supported by, by local people. Yeah, and the message is for our listeners, get out there and support the athletes next weekend in, in Donegal if they want to do so. All the information again on the website, the oh, social media. Exactly, yeah. So it starts uh, at 5 a.m. from from, uh, from Garden uh, on Saturday morning and finishes at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. So it's 24 hours all around the course. And um, Get onto our website, the race.ie, and you'll see all the different places that you can go and support the competitors. And if you want to get involved in marshalling or helping out, that's the website check out there as well. So thanks very much. Yeah, David, thanks for coming into the studios of Highland and telling us all about the race and the best of luck with the event next weekend. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Cheers now.